The main theme of stealth camping is to avoid being seen by people. In order to do that, it's best to pack light, keep a low profile, and be prepared to break camp fast, even if it's in the dark. In a previous episode, we looked at 20 different techniques and skills that you can do to reduce the chance of being spotted. This time, we take it up a level and look at more extreme techniques you can adopt to avoid being seen. When looking for a place to stealth camp, rather than traipsing through the woods trying to find somewhere to shelter, a simple, cheap monocular can help you identify good camping areas way ahead of you. You can clip them to your backpack so you can use it on the move, and it's so compact that it wouldn't take up much room in your pack. Using some vegetation as a backdrop, you can scout the area ahead to look for ideal locations to stealth camp, or check the movements of any people nearby. This particular one comes with a carry case, so you can attach it to your belt if you would prefer. When setting up a shelter, be it a tent, tarp, or even making a natural shelter, it needs to ideally be low profile and fast to set up. A small, lightweight tarp like this 2.9 by 3 meter tarp is ideal for most situations. A tarp is much more versatile than a tent and can often be quicker to set up. One of the best low profile tarp setups is to lay your tarp flat down on the ground, preferably with bushes and small vegetation nearby. Peg out the four corners of the tarp so that it is quite tight. Then cut a small stick and place this underneath the front of the centre of the tarp. Now you have a low profile shelter, but it's still quite visible. Add some camo netting over the top of the tarp to help blur the sharp edges and make it blend in more with the surrounding woodland. Take this one step further by adding nearby debris, be it leaves or branches from dead vegetation. The camo netting traps the leaves and stops them falling off, allowing you to cover your entire shelter. Here is my tarp before the camo netting is applied, and here it is after, much less visible than just the tarp on its own. If tarps aren't your thing, then a small, lightweight tent is just as effective. I opt for the ultra compact and lightweight Snugback Bivy. It's essentially a bivy bag with a raised hoop section to allow room for you to move and protect yourself from the elements. I like it because it's fast to set up and easy to pack away. However, if pitched right out in the open, it still really stands out. When stealth is key, I try to set it up near dense vegetation, or even halfway in a bush, so that very little of the tent is visible. In the past Stealth Camping Tips episode, I showed you how a simple piece of camo netting can disrupt the sharp outline of your tent and make it blend into the surroundings. This works well in daylight, but it doesn't stop the fact that at night, your body is still radiating heat. With this thermal imaging camera, you can see how much I stand out in the forest. To anyone using thermal imaging scopes or binoculars, I would be easy to find in the dark, even if my shelter was well hidden. The reflective properties of a mylar blanket or space blanket can significantly mask the heat radiation my body gives off. You can see from this clip here, as I raise the blanket up in front of me, it greatly reduces the heat signature produced by my body. You can place the blanket over your body inside your tent. However, chances are it can roll off at night as you move. Instead, I carry a compact emergency bivy. It's the size of a can of Coke, but unfolds into a space blanket sleeping bag. I can then pull this over my body and not worry about it falling off in the night. It won't completely remove my heat signature, but it definitely makes a significant difference to the visibility of my body at night. In addition to that, it will also help to trap the heat inside my sleeping bag and keep me warmer. Now that's nighttime concealment covered, but in the daylight, I still stand out. The lightness of my skin against my clothing means I still stand out pretty significantly. I can reduce this by applying some two or three color camo face paint. I start with the darkest paint and apply it to the parts of my face that protrude the most, which is my nose, the area of my forehead above my eyebrows, and my cheekbones. It's important not to miss the inside of the nostrils, which can still stand out, so give it a good old nose pick just to make sure it's covered. My ears also stick out, so I'll cover those too as well as my chin. Next, I use the slightly lighter green colour and blend this on the areas of skin in between the dark colours I just applied. Not forgetting my eyelids, lips and neck. Finally, as there are quite a few brown leaves on the floor of the forest I am in, I will blend in some brown to break up the other colours. The only exposed area of my skin left is the back of my hands, so I'll apply some of the darker colours to these too. Now once inside my shelter, I am much more concealed. The only thing that could give me away would be the reflection of my watch. 
which I could just remove and keep in my pack. If you feel taking camo face paint with you is a little too much, then that's not a problem. You can always make some on the fly if you found yourself needing to bug out and avoid being seen. Just grab a handful of dirt or clay, and if you've had a fire, grab some charcoal from it, making sure it's cold. Crush the dirt and charcoal into fine pieces, then add a small bit of water to thicken the consistency of it. Now you can apply it to your face in the same way that was used for the camo face paint. Use the dark charcoal colour on the features of your face that stick out the most. The nose, ears, cheeks, eyebrows and chin. Then use the lighter coloured mud in between to blend the colours in. It's not as effective as the camo face paint, but it still tones down the highlights of your skin and makes you blend in more. For those of you that carry a hammock, you have a few options. Although you are generally more exposed when hammock camping, as you will likely have a tarp above your head, you can still take steps to aid you when stealth camping. Using a hammock sleeve like this one means that you can quickly deploy or pack away your hammock at speed should you need to bail and get back to your vehicle. Just slide the sleeve back over the hammock, detach it from the tree and it will save you a lot of time when packing up. This particular hammock has a fly net attached to it. This means that I can set my hammock up between two trees like normal, but this time use it as a ground shelter by laying the hammock on the floor and then raising the fly net and tying it to a tree a few feet above the ground. To make the shelter blend in more, I can throw over some camo netting and leaves like in the previous shelter, and all of a sudden, I have a quick deploy ground shelter as well as a hammock. Granted, I would still need a tarp above my head if it were to rain, but something small and compact like the tarp used earlier would be easy enough to set up. If I wanted to be bold and build a shelter from natural materials, I often look for areas of woodland where there is already likely to be a fallen tree or plenty of materials to build with. This saves on half of the building time needed to make a shelter. For example, this tree root here offers full protection from one side. I only need to build two walls either side and make a raised bed so that if it rains I wouldn't be sitting in water. And then build a roof on top and provide some cover with any leaves or debris nearby. Be wary of any tree roots that look unstable as some might collapse forward onto your shelter. As with any shelter, when stealth camping, it's good to keep it minimum and low profile. Here's one I built by attaching some bin bags to a few sticks that I bent over to form a tunnel. I then broke up the outline of the shelter by using some leaves from a nearby bush. You'll notice that although the shelter blends in well, the ends of the cut wood are pretty white and still stand out. You can mask these by simply rubbing some mud over the cut ends, like in this example here. If you need to head further away from camp to collect water or gather more resources and you are worried about someone finding your gear, you can place your pack in a bush and throw over some camo netting to keep it well hidden. Many saws and knives are made from stainless steel. Naturally, this has a reflective property to it, which means that it stands out easily in dark areas such as forests. However, with the advancement of technology, you can now find a number of different tools with a black anodized coating which is designed to protect the steel and prolong its life, but it also means that it can be an ideal tool for stealth camping as the light doesn't reflect off it. The most efficient way to boil and cook food when camping is likely to be a gas stove. However, as efficient as these are at boiling water, they tend to be pretty loud. The most discreet way of boiling water would be a meth burning stove or alcohol burner. I keep a full cook kit in this camo case. It houses my stove, cook cup and drinking cup all in one compact carry bag which has molly webbing on the back to attach it to the outside of my bag should I need to. I pour the methylated spirit into the Trangia burner and light it. You can see that it burns with an almost invisible flame. I fold over the pot stand and place my pot of water on top and add the lid. Now I leave that to boil whilst I finish setting up camp. The great thing about this type of fuel burner is that it makes no noise whilst boiling the water and it doesn't give off any smell like a campfire would. It takes a few more minutes to boil water than a gas stove would, but it's a hell of a lot quieter and ideal for stealth camping. Another, more compact stealth cooker is a folding hexi stove. These often come in military MRE ration packs. Essentially, it's a flat piece of metal that you fold into a small stove. Then you light the hexamine heating tablets that come with the stove and place your pot on top. This is another really compact way of cooking food and boiling water, as well as giving off very little smoke and noise. 
If you find that you need to make a fire for warmth, then the best option would be to dig a Dakota fire pit. This is essentially one hole about 12 inches deep, and then another smaller hole next to it about the same depth. Then use a stick to create a hole or tunnel between these two holes. Now make your fire in the larger hole and the smaller hole acts as a wind tunnel to keep air and oxygen supplying your fire. Now you have a discrete fire that hides the flames well and allows you to cook food or boil water. However, this doesn't stop the fact that your fire might produce lots of smoke, which could be a huge giveaway when stealth camping. To prevent this, it's important that you only burn dead, dry wood. The drier the better. Here are two fire lays. The one on the left has dry wood, and the one on the right has damp, wet wood. Both burn fairly well to begin with, because I lit them both with a strong fire lighter. However, after a few minutes the fire on the right is struggling to produce enough heat to burn efficiently. If I go to add small twigs that are still green and damp, you will see that it instantly starts to smoke. Now, even if the fire on the left is burning well, if I add wet wood to that, it will start to smoke too. And now you can see that after just a few seconds of adding wet wood, there is smoke billowing from the fire. This is now a massive giveaway of my location, and I would be visible even from many kilometres away. So ideally, try and find dead dry wood that is hanging up in tree branches and off the ground. If comfort is your thing, and you don't wish to be cramped inside a small bivy bag or tarp, then a standard two-person tent works just as well, providing you don't set it up in open ground that is easily visible. I normally opt for a tent that has a dark inner tent and dark olive green or brown outer fly sheet. The reason being is that some lightweight tents have a brighter inner tent and lightweight fly sheet. These are generally made with thin material in order to be lightweight. However, the cost of having this lighter material means that at night, when you are inside your tent with a head torch or light on, your tent will light up much more and therefore be more visible in the dark. The tents that have thick inner linings and outer fly sheets cut down the light given off by your head torch when inside and reduce the chance of your tent being spotted in the distance. If you need to make a quick getaway and break down camp fast, the large dry sack is an ideal piece of kit to have inside your pack. When rolled up, it takes up very little space, but when you need to get a wet tent or tarp packed away quickly, you can just shove it inside your dry bag and head off. This saves a lot on time and hassle of trying to roll it up inside its own carry sack. A simple Sialum glow stick can be really handy at night. It doesn't give off as much light as an LED head torch would, and if the batteries ran out on your head torch, then you have a backup light source if needed. They can be useful when trying to navigate without a light source. Another backup navigation option is to have a GPS watch. Many modern GPS watches have a tracking option, and you can set this to track you as you head out into the woods to find camp. Then, if you need to navigate back to your vehicle in the dark, you can use the GPS tracker on your watch to find your way back. I wouldn't solely rely on this for navigation, but it is a great backup option to have. If you are camping and find that you have run out of drinking water, the chances are you are going to need to find a water source and then filter and boil the water to make it drinkable. This is a long process and often means that you will need to start a fire or use your stove. If time is tight, then having a portable water filter in your pack will make your life much easier. There is a huge range of water filters out there now. Some have a small bag like this one, which you fill with water and then put the filter on top and drink through. Others have a hand pump, and some are built into the water bottle itself and filter the water directly as you drink it. Either way, they are a good backup option to have if you find you have run out of water. And there is just a few more stealth camping tips that might not work for everyone, but have proven successful for me in the past. Sure, some of them are extreme, but we never know what situation we might find ourselves in. If you're interested in this type of topic, be sure to watch my other videos on stealth camping and check out my Wilderness Survival Tips playlist in the video description below. I will also put some links to some of the gear used in this video. For my official bushcraft and camping gear, head to my site taoutdoors.com. Thanks for watching folks, and I'll see you in the next one.